Erev Tov, Chavrim. Uh, good evening, my friends. It is 4th of July, and so you no doubt will hear a lot of fireworks in the background and perhaps the little message, the few minutes here I'm going to spend with you um, may reflect a little bit of what we hear on 4th of July, a lot of fireworks coming here. Uh, I'm going to be reading from two different passages, and it's a very short message here. Uh, but I also want to just speak to you and let you know that this weekend, uh, me and my wife will be working on a series of messages, some that I believe that will be crucial for many of you to hear. Freedom, I guess, would be a good way to describe those messages uh, where you can find out truly how God has called us uh, as one in Christ. Let me just say that. So many of the sisters will be blessed. The brothers will be important for you to listen to these 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 uh, services or messages that we bring to you. Uh, we are looking uh, and and just stepping out on faith to try to go full time into the ministry and try to reach people around the world. Uh, we are preparing um, in many different areas. Our website. Uh, preparing for traveling, preparing for uh, more interviews. We've done several on Revelation News Now radio, if you want to go into the archives. Uh, kind of some of the stuff was last minute. John B. Wells from Coast to Coast was on on a couple other programs. They asked me to come on and speak with John. It was a pleasure to do so. Uh, possibly we'll be going on Coast to Coast as well with John very soon. I don't know how that will all pan out, but we'll just kind of pray about it to see if it's the will of the Lord. If it reaches more people, then amen, and we certainly thank God for that. Um, as we step out, though, in faith in this ministry, if you want to be a part of that, and we certainly don't done anyone, uh, we just simply say if you'd like to be a part, we would love to have you as a part of that. We'll be working to put together uh, a newsletter program as well that will come out uh, in the beginning once a month and then hopefully in the near future twice a month and uh, to keep you up to speed and up to date with things that are going on. My wife is becoming more and more active and involved, especially after God began to deal with her in a supernatural way in Revelation, much like he does with myself. And uh, you'll get to hear some of that this weekend, some of the things that God has revealed to her and it has been exciting for her to see the things that God is showing her as well. Uh, but anyway, let me just kind of share with you. Let's take, I'd like to read to you from Romans, a very familiar scripture to Christians, Romans 11. And this is where Paul is trying to address the Christian people about Israel, how that uh, he, can, he shows Israel as being the natural olive tree, how that the natural branches were cut out uh, partly due to unbelief, partly because of blindness, and that the Gentile, who is the wild olive tree, the branches from the wild olive tree were grafted into the natural olive tree. Keep in mind, though, the root of that tree is Mashiach. It is Christ. It's Yeshua. He is that root of that tree. He is the trunk, we might say, and the branches were only grafted in. This, I don't really know how to put this to you easily as I say these things to you because this revelation that God has given me is not actually from Romans, but I want to read to you from Romans here because it'll help you better understand what God has been dealing with my heart on. And it is something that has troubled me greatly. It's not that I did not know it but it has troubled me greatly since the Lord showed me um, a passage in, a, in the revelation thereof. And so I'm asking you to seriously take what I'm going to tell you to heart. And I often speak to you about praying and about reaching out to the lost, reaching out to your family, reaching out to your loved ones, and compelling them to come in, to recognize, do everything you can to get your loved ones in. And when you see something that you're fixing to see here, I think you'll understand why this urgency is tremendous. Um, 
and, and I might I might add as well, you know, God deals with my heart for my own people, for them, for their eyes to come open and at, at a time where I believe that God will open their eyes. And it may be that it's a carryover time that that this message is reaching maybe to the secular Jews and Jews around the world that have not returned to the homeland to recognize Moshiach because we know that God will raise up two witnesses for the 144,000. But even so, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand the days of the Gentiles are very limited. And taking this serious into heart is an understatement that I could say to you. And uh, But anyway... Many of you are familiar with the scripture about the, the olive tree, the wild and the, and, and the tame olive tree, that, which was Israel and the Gentile church. Uh, let me just pick up around verse 17. And some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Now you're grafted in among them. That's speaking of the... Jewish believers that did believe in Jesus as Mashiach, Yeshua. Uh, so there are some still there, but a lot of the branches were taken out because of unbelief. Notice what he says in verse 18. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Very carefully, please listen to this. Now, verse 19, Thou will say then, The branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, verse 20, Because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Many, many denominational Christians are so really high-minded, you might say. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God in them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide, abide not, still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Now, um, and by the way, let, let me just say this before I move on. Uh, my wife, is, as we have, uh, Sid Rothwood at Supernatural, has been considering uh, the book Yam Suf of having us on air there. And in the process of the communication back and forth, my wife began to do a little research of people that have been on this show before. A family in particular really struck my heart, and that was a show that was done with um, Rita McPherson uh, in, the, in the book that she wrote, and I forget the name of the book that she wrote, but her son Aldo uh, that, that was killed in a car accident. And the amazing story that happened uh, he was in a coma. He went and met Yeshua. Things that happened to him that he comes back and speaks about, it, it had to be completely God. And But the whole story, though, really touched my heart, dramatically so. Uh, but one thing in particular I'd like to mention as I read this right here, Aldo spoke to his mother one day and he was crying and he says to her and I'm just paraphrasing this so forgive me if I don't get it just right but he says to his mother she asked him why he's crying he said the bride is not ready and he saw a, a golden bridge going up to a gate and the people that were outside of it were crying because in behind that gate was the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I remember a friend of mine years ago, as I spoke about these things, saw in a dream three times in a row the exact same dream. And each time that young lady saw, she came up to a beautiful gate and there was thunders and lightnings and stuff. She said, though, when the third time came, the gate opened 
And there was a voice that said, welcome into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now this was a Catholic girl, not even knowing the scriptural things in the book of Revelation. But the thought though that I have with Aldo uh, McPherson is that he recognized that the bride was not ready. And it is a serious thing not to be ready. And I can't encourage you enough to pray and to cry out. And as you hear, we just sit here, Saul, don't be high-minded, for he, you know, if he spared not the natural branches, take he lest he also spare not thee. And if the and if the natural branches didn't continue in unbelief, he's able to regraft them in again. Now that shows that Israel is going to be saved. And of course, Paul does go into that much deeper. Now I want to turn with you now to a scripture in the book of Malachi. Now in the Christian Bible, which I'm reading from, you call it Malachi chapter four. In the Hebrew Bible, it's not four; it's chapter three. And I'm going to take you to verse 19 in, in the Hebrew Bible, that is. But for the Christians, I'll read from your Bible. So it'd be Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. Now, I wrote a little short article about this on my website but I, because I felt the urgency to speak about this. But I'm going to read to you here. It says, For behold, the day cometh, that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now there's a lot written here in Malachi, the last few verses here, um, that I would like to take you through very soon. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what drew me to this to begin with. I have wondered for years when God says here to Moses, or excuse me, says to the people here in verse 4, Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him and Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. I have always wondered why did God say this? Why would he ask us to remember? There's something there at Mount Horeb that has something to do with the things that will take place here. I, that I do know. But what he did show me, and I was really troubled in my heart about that scripture once again. And when I opened up the Bible, not even remembering where that was at, I was telling my wife about that scripture and I opened my Bible the next day and begin to read and sure enough I read it again I thought there's where it was I'd forgotten but I read verse 1 and when I did the thought I'd always had in my life was that it's just a natural description of what happens the day comes we know that he's gonna burn the earth with fire and brimstone and I thought that when it says it'll leave them neither root nor branches, talking about their arms and legs. They won't have arms or legs. But that's not what it means. And what the Lord showed me it means. Though I've always believed this, it has shaken my soul to the very core. When he says it shall leave them neither root nor branch, this is the fulfillment of what Paul saw in Romans 11. Remember how Paul said, Be ye not therefore high minded, for he's able to take you out and regraft in Israel again. Notice what it says For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. That's a future event yet to happen. And all the proud, and yea, all that do wickedly. You know, that's interesting. That's exactly what the church is like today. They're proud. 
They don't really need God in the first place. They got everything. Doesn't the scripture say in the Christian Bible, you have need of nothing? You got all your different wonderful uh, programs in your church. The big churches have, you know, the, the, the games and the football games and, and the sports activities and everything else. But where's God? Miss McPherson, when she was on Sid Roth, she brought that out as well when God dealt with her. As he spoke to her heart about the Laodicean church age. And that's what Aldo, her son, said at 12 years old. He says, Mother, we are in the Laodicean church age. And, we're neither, and the thing is, is God doesn't want you lukewarm. He wants you either cold or hot. So, but Paul noticed, though, he said, don't be high-minded, proud. But see what happens to the proud? They shall be stubble in the day that cometh, shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. The Gentile is the olive branch that was grafted in. In other words, you're being cut out of the tree. The root is Yeshua. It is the Moshiach. It is Christ. It's not only that you're taken out of the tree, but you also have Christ removed from you. Do you realize the seriousness and the significance of what Malachi is writing here? He is, it, Paul saw that there would come a time when Israel would once again believe. And Malachi also recognizes that. And it's right at a time, right before the destruction. And it leaves you neither root nor branch. In other words, it, he, he will, with his fierce anger, you will have no Christ in your life and you'll be cut from the tree. Now watch what he says in verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, S-U-N, Son of Righteousness, arise with healing in his wings. You that fear my name. Do you realize the one people on earth that fear the name of Hashem more than any people on the face of this earth are the Orthodox Jewish people of Israel. They are so fearful of mispronouncing his name. Or if the name, the yod heh vav -Hey, is written on a board. There was one time a friend of mine in the Chabad organization, they were writing out on the board and they wrote out yod heh vav -Hey, which is Hashem's name, divine name. And when he realized that he had written the name out, because the name was so sacred, you can't erase it. So he took a, a saw and they cut the chalkboard where the name of, of Hashem was at and they buried it in the ground as a respect to God and a respect to His name. Show me who has that much fear of saying His name incorrectly. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, S-U-N of righteousness, arise with healing in his wings. Remember in Genesis when it says, Ve'yomer Elohim Yahi Or. And let there be light. And God said, let there be light. And we look at that as being the S-U-N, the Son. But as I told you, it was God making himself materialize in the dimension in which we live in. In other words, Israel begins to recognize who their Messiah is. Unreal what I'm reading here. He arises with healing in his wings, under the shadow of his wings. You realize, though, that's not just physical healing. 
Israel has a need of restoration where their iniquities and their sins are all blotted out. They have need of healing as a nation. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. Now, if you don't wonder what there, what he's speaking about there, remember, they invade Israel right about this time, just before God burns all this up. Now, remember, it's not chronological order. We often make a mistake in trying to interpret scriptures chronologically, and that's not necessarily the way God does it. They walk out on the ashes. I used to think that that was walking into the millennium. It's not what it's speaking of. It's when God begins to deal with her enemies. That's what it's speaking of. Then as it said, it says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with his statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, a lot of people say it's John the Baptist. Well, I have to agree partly because we find that Yeshua does quote part of verse 6 and applies it to John the Baptist. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Isn't that interesting? He turns the heart of the fathers to their children. What was the heart of the fathers? The heart of the fathers was the coming of the seed, the promised one, the promised son, Moshiach. John did exactly that. The very desire that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob all longed for was the coming of Messiah to restore the relationship that was lost at the Garden of Eden. And John turned their desire, turned Moshiach to them and presented him to them. The second half of the verse is not John. And the heart of the children to their fathers. The day we're living in now, the children's desire, the people that are returning home to Israel now, they tell you, we're going home to see Mashiach. Now their desire is the desire of the fathers. And he says he'll turn, this, now this is Elijah's going to do this. He's going to turn the heart of the children to their fathers. In other words, to the same desire that the fathers had for Mashiach. And didn't John do just that? I'll share one other thing with you before we close here. Something that the Lord showed me that I, just blew me away. You ever wonder why John the Baptist received the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb? He had to have done. It had to be that way. I don't know if you realize that or not. John is a representation of the bride of Christ, the first fruits, we might say, of the bride of Christ. Did not God take Eve from her husband, Adam? She came from him. No mention in the scripture whatsoever of Eve having to have the Holy Ghost breathed into her nostrils. You know why? When God breathed it into Adam in the beginning. It says, Ishmat Chaim, which means he breathed the breath of Yahweh's life in a plural form into that body. But when he said that Adam became a living soul, or for his soul, a nefesh chaya was the life of Yahweh, it's done in a singular, because it applied to Adam only like that. But when Eve came out, there was no need to breathe in her nostrils because she came out filled with the Holy Ghost. John as a type of the restoration of the bride of Christ came out of his mother's womb filled with the Holy Ghost showing he his bro oh wow uh, that, that's that's a deep one guys that's a deep one maybe I'll go into that a little bit later especially when we begin to talk about the message this weekend with my wife 
Uh, anyway, I know it's been a little long, been a little bit noisy out here. I, I meant to be this just for a few minutes. But God bless you. I trust you're all doing well. Um, again, as I say, we are going to, we're stepping out on faith here to try to go to the ministry full time. I'm still working though. Um, we need the time just really to spend. We're in an extremely late hour, very late hour. There's so much that you need to know. There's so much that God deals with my heart on and I can't find the time to do it. And yet I believe that there's things that you need to know. I had a, uh, 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 someone I met in Miami. I deliver pianos for those of you that don't know. I deliver pianos around the uh, Southeast United States and sometimes up into the Eastern and Northern States as well. But the Owen family out of Miami, Florida, I took a piano to them, never had met the couple before, very nice couple there. And while I was there, there was a, um, a Tanakh that they had laying over on a table. And we began to talk about the great things of God. And as I got ready to leave, Miss Owens there walked over, handed me that Tanakh, brand new, and it was a stone edition, which is from the Chabad organization. And she was not aware of that, but it was a stone edition. I had lost mine not too long ago. Somehow or another, I don't know where I've placed it. I got so many Bibles as it is, but I placed my old one somewhere. And I've not been able to figure out where I laid it down at. Now, I'm sure it's somewhere. I just got to find it. But it troubled me. And I had been wanting another one. And my wife was going to buy me one recently. But it was the one that she saw that we were looking at was about $50, and I just didn't have the money for it. So I told her, honey, don't do it right now. Just don't worry about it. I said, maybe the Lord help me find my other one. But the one I always wanted, though, was a stone edition. That's what I really wanted. And that's like almost a $100 Tanakh. It's got the Hebrew on one side and the English on the other side, where I can talk to you a little bit about it as we go along. And she brought it over, Miss Owens did, and she said, we want to bless you with this. And the odd thing is, and I don't know if I always say something like this on video, but I'm going to tell you anyway, something that they didn't even know. Maybe one day they might watch these video, this video here and see it. I have no idea. Her husband walked over and he gave me a little, little bit of money for being able to, for, for bringing the piano, just a, a kindness, an offering you might call it, I guess. A tip, maybe, you might say. When I had left out to go to that job that morning, I had forgot my wallet at home. The van had just enough fuel to get me over there, and that was it. Had no way to go home. My wife was telling me, I'll, I'll wire you some money. I said, how would I get it? I have no idea or nothing. Well, she was worried about me. And I told her, I said, honey, don't worry. I said, I don't know how I'd do it, but I know God will provide a way. I said, maybe if I go to the bank and you just call them while I'm there. You know, I have no idea. I said, but I know God will provide a way. She said, all right. So while I was there, and, and Brother Owens, he handed me this, this little bit of money there, and I walked out to the vehicle. And when I got everything in, I'm getting ready to drive down the road. I pulled out of the pocket, and it was a $100 bill. And it takes about $65 or so in fuel, I guess. Maybe it doesn't take that much, but 75 fills the tank back up. And I thought, God, how merciful you are to provide the very need that we have in a time of trouble like that. And so I, I really thank that family. If they ever do listen to this video, God bless your hearts now and forever, I pray. And God bless the rest of you for all that your love and kindness and the giving that you do. And if you're listening, because I probably won't put it on here as far as writing it on here, but if you want to be a part of this, you can go to israelreturns.com. That's just like the country's name, Israel, I-S-R-A-E-L, returns, R-E-T-U-R-N-S dot com. There's a little donation button at the top left-hand corner. We are looking to get a web person. If you know someone that's a good web person to help us with the website, we'd be greatly appreciated to hire someone that can help us with the website because many of you have asked to be able to just click a button to where it would just automatically do the deduction for the next 12 months. We'll try to... We really are trying to get all this put together. It takes a little time, uh, but we want to streamline everything to where even like when, for example, if you give an offering and you would like a book sent to you, we're trying to get it to where everything goes faster, not just delayed. So God bless you, and we thank you for all that you do. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, and Yeshua 
תודה רבה, all of you. God bless.